this is going to provide you a snippet of what we provide in a full-fledged prospecting training class. We're taking one particular aspect of, of prospecting and just showing you some of the models that we actually use to provide predictive uh, prospecting. If you have any questions, please go ahead and put them in chat. We will cover them at the end with a Q&A session. So I also ask that everyone please stay muted so that everyone can hear me in the actual uh, presentation. As you saw in the video, this is a case study of Cigna Healthcare. We're going to assume that we are a CRM uh, solution provider. All of the information that, that I have captured is, is publicly available, researched from the website using the 10K report. So, it, and the, the purpose and the information that I'm sharing is simply for education purposes only. Now, when you think of prospecting training, and you tell your sales reps that you're going to be offering that, you might get a lot of groans, particularly from experienced sales reps. They're saying, gee, you know, prospecting is such a fundamental concept. You know, I'm already doing it and I do it every day. But the question is, how well are they doing it? And I have some interesting statistics to show you in general of how well people actually are prospecting. So when we look at what we're going to cover today, I want to talk about the actual prospecting challenges that exist today, particularly in IT sales. We're going to go over a particular model for understanding the business environment, because the most important thing in sales is preparation. I look at sales as three key things. It's the preparation, it's the execution, and it's the connection with the customer. And if we don't start with good preparation, we're dead in the water. Once I've covered the actual uh, module that I wanted to show you, well, I'll go over the uh, full prospecting course with you, and then we'll leave things open for a Q&A. So when we look at the success of prospecting today, it's scary. In a recent finances online survey, 2% of cold calls actually result in a meeting. Emails are even worse. In a recent study from salesforce.com, 0.3% of emails are actually working. Think about that, folks. That's three out of every thousand emails that you're sending out. It's no wonder that prospecting training is very, very important. One of the key reasons why prospecting doesn't work is because 82% of business to business decision makers do not think that sales reps are prepared. When I originally presented this information, it was from serious decisions, but recent research has shown that the marketing blender and biznology, they're all coming up with this same data point. So I can't emphasize the importance of showing up and being prepared. The world has changed. There is so much information that is available to you. And in fact, Decision makers spend a lot of their time ahead of time doing research on you and research on the various products that are actually available. So prospecting is a lot of different things. I'm simply going to focus on one aspect of the preparation, the groundwork that you need to do, and that is understanding the business environment. We heard the animated video of the case study for Cigna Healthcare. There are customer facing systems that they're looking for that will enhance the value in specialty claims and retail. And they're also looking for the delivery of advanced analytics and predictive intelligence. Where did I get this information? Well, I'm gonna show you, it's from their 10K report and um, back up a moment here. I'm going to show you how I actually got there. You go to Google and you simply type in Cigna 10K report. You get a whole list of results and the very first one provides their annual reports, all of their financial annual reports. The first one is the 2021, so we want to get to the most specific one. Okay. I like to save my 10K report as a PDF 
because this enables me to search for information quickly on, on the annual report. And one of the things that I like to search for is technology. But before I do that, it's nice to just scroll through the overall introductory information to see um, if there's some key statistics. Like for example, I scrolled right here and notice that the revenue has increased to $160 billion and it's representing a 14% year over year growth. That's a key thing to remember about Cigna, that they are growing. They're not only growing in their revenue, they're also growing in the number of customer relationships that they have, which is currently at 175 million. They're growing in the number of healthcare providers that they're working with, that's 1.6 million. And finally, I'd just like to note that there's an international growth here. It's 30 plus companies and growing. Now, as I've mentioned before, one of the other key things that we want to focus on is the technology. So I am going to go ahead and enter my search for technology to see what comes up. Notice that we've gotten to an outline here that says that right here at data analytics and technology is on page 19. So I'm going to continue scrolling here until I reach page 19 of their overall report. And here I've gotten to it, data analytics and technology. This is where we can glean some useful information about where are their specific strategic initiatives with technology. I found this sentence right here in the fourth paragraph really interesting. During 2020, significant continued technology and integration delivered cost synergies and drove differentiated innovation in areas such as pharmacy, supply chain, specialty pharmacy, and retail networks. In the future, this is where the change is, we expect continued value realization with a focus on customer facing systems and opportunities for enhanced value in specialty claims and retail. Key points to note that they are continued value realization focusing on customer facing systems and opportunities for enhanced value in specialty claims and retail. So in summary, what I've showed you in the 10K report are two key pieces of information. One, we've shown that there is a significant revenue growth of 14% of $160 billion, as well as an increase in the number of customer relations that they have, as well as an international growth. In addition, we have captured some three key data points on the data analytics and technology of areas where they're going to be making investments. Keep these two statistics in mind because in a couple of slides, I'm going to be introducing a TalSmart model where we can apply this information to revenue and to technology specifically and provide a numeric value that represents the knowledge of change that we are seeing with this company. Again, we simply want to get the information that's going to be relevant to opening a call. I see a lot of reps fall into the trap of going into an analysis paralysis. There are other sources for account research. Generic resources like LinkedIn Sales Navigator and Zoom Info to grab contacts and other high level information. I have found for myself that focusing on the industry and the company really helps me zero in on some key points. One of the things aside from the 10K report that I like to do a little search on was, was just the overall industry news and what is Cigna doing around COVID-19. So all of this information can be used, but we want to apply it to a specific model here. This model goes over multiple facets of our company. And, and the idea here is that we want to understand what are the change elements and what do we know is changing or has changed with the company around these particular aspects? Each of these eight facets based upon the information that I've gleaned from the Cigna 10K report. 
and we'll start with the product solution. So from the 10K report, we have some idea that they're looking at advanced analytics and predictive intelligence. We don't know specifically what they're using what and what may change. So I would put that at a six. By the way, the idea is to get as close to the bullseye as possible. So the lower the number, the better. In terms of their strategy, there was a rich amount of content provided in the 10K about where they're heading, what they'd like to change. And so I would put that at a two. Again, also with the revenue from a 10K report, there's a lot of information you get from the revenue. We don't know, you know, they talked, I didn't mention this, but they talked about double digit growth, but um, they didn't, we haven't seen much in terms of their overall goals. So maybe that's a three or a four. There's a bit more information to ascertain there. The politics of the organization, that's going to be ascertained from talking to multiple people. And there's a bit more that we need to capture from actually calling the customer. So I would put that at an eight. In terms of their overall culture, we can get some information off of the website, but I would say, you know, to truly understand the backend culture and particularly the culture of IT in specific, there's a lot to, to uncover there. So I would say that's probably at an eight. Uh, in terms of the overall competition, you know, we know who our competitors are, perhaps as a being a CM provider, but what does the customer think of the competition? Where is their mindset at? Not, not a whole lot of information. So that's kind of far out of the bullseye as well. I would say that that's probably at an eight. In terms of the overall technology, we do know a good bit about the technology and, and what they're changing because that was provided in the TNK report. Probably a bit more information to gather, but I would put that as a three. Um, and finally, with the overall organization chart, we're going to have to do research with some of the other account research tools that I talked about to understand the organization. But I, I also have found, in terms of truly understanding, in terms of an influence map, how the organization functions, that again is something that you ascertain from actually talking to people. So I would put that at an eight. So once you have this map, as, as Jazzy mentioned, you're aligning your company with understanding this account and what we understand about them. But it also sets up for the initial discovery the initial prospecting call to use the information that we know, but also tailor our questions to uncover the important aspects of what we do not know. Now, there's a bit more research that you can do and other models you can utilize to lay the groundwork for. But I just wanted to give you a flavor in terms of the prospecting course of what I found was the most important one. And that is understanding the business environment. Because when you understand your customer, they're more likely to feel like you care about them and more likely to want to talk with you when you make that initial call. So we have created an overall sales hunter prospecting course, and I wanted to give you a flavor for the other aspects that are, are covered there, the overall outline. We spend a good amount of time talking about the evolution of the business because it's very important to understand how things have changed. I talked about the fact that there are so many social media tools and other tools available that the customer is a lot smarter. Uh, and this transition of going from the industrial age to the digital age to the information age, there's a lot of change that's taken place. The groundwork is Yes, it involves the business analysis of understanding your customer, which I went through that model, but it's also doing a sales analysis. Of what specifically do we provide that will align with that? And also the competitive analysis. Do we know what, who they use? How do we rack up against them? Is there a play to intervene ourselves or inject ourselves into the actual work that they're doing? Once we've laid the groundwork, we can do our overall call planning that is coming up with the actual initial message, perhaps the initial email messaging that we're going to provide to the customer. And then we're ready to do the actual call connection, which is providing our unique value proposition 
and asking the intelligent questions with the goal of getting a win for an overall discovery um, call to, to, to progress the opportunity further. And also, I would say, determine whether or not this is a right fit for us. So with that being said, uh, I am really excited that I'm working with a company like Talsmart that is offering such a systematic approach to prospecting and selling. I, I think that prospecting is one of the most underestimated uh, courses or, or sales skills that you can be talking about with your sales reps. It's so key. You know, I've heard so many reps, they have um, different complaints. And not everyone, I won't say that you can dismiss all of these complaints, but more often than not, you'll hear them say, you know, Wilson, I don't have the right products to sell. I don't have the right manager. Um, I don't have the right territory. The truth is, more often than not, these are bogus complaints. The fact of the matter is, they're not selling because they don't have enough in their pipeline. And they don't have enough in their pipeline because they have failed to prospect well. 